Now, good evening, everyone. Yeah, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to discuss something that is a bit not what we are used to. It's not about science. We are going to study how we are going to discuss how to study and make effective grades. How to study well, make effective grades, and pass very well. Now, this is important to note because even as we discuss different concepts in science, it's important. It is important that we are able to study. We know how to study and make good grades. Many times we see students struggling. It's not that they are not reading, it's not that they are not putting in the time, but somehow their grades are not showing forth the effort that they have been putting into their studies. And this is a problem. Now, let me put out this disclaimer first of all that these are just my own methods and the things I've done to be able to study better. I'm not saying that it is the only method, I'm not saying that there are no other methods that can work. There are other methods that can work. This is just my own method and it has worked well for me. And I've taken quite a number of exams at different levels, at the undergraduate levels, at secondary school levels, at postgraduate level, at PhD level. I've taken different exams. So I have passed exams, I've failed exams. So I feel that I'm in a good position to discuss some of the things that I've done to help me and which you can do. And like I said, it is not the only method. Everybody has his own method and if this if you find this useful and it works for you then it's very good now it's important to know that there are about four important things to know before we start going into the steps and what are these four important things to know one reading is important and reading seems to be the easiest of the whole matter once you're able to recognize alphabets and recognize words i'm sure that you can read so reading is the first issue you recognize alphabets you recognize words and then you know what the words mean. So that is reading. Now, after reading, the next thing that is important to note is comprehension. Are you comprehending? Are you understanding what you are reading? You read a piece of material, you read four paragraphs, you read three paragraphs. Do you understand what these paragraphs are saying? This is very, very important. You'll be able to read, you'll be able to comprehend or understand what you just read. Now, if you read and you comprehend, the next issue is retention. Are you able to retain that information? The three paragraphs that you read, that you understood, are you able to retain and keep this information in your mind, in the recesses of your mind? How well are you able to do that? And the fourth and most important thing in my own estimate is recall. Many people retain but can't recall. So that is the most important part, recalling what you have read, what you have comprehended, what you have retained in the recesses of your mind. Are you able to recall it when you get into a test situation, when you get into an exam situation? Are you able to recall the information that you have kept in the um, recesses of your mind so that you can pass your exam? Now, these four things are important. And to me, and I believe to most students, recall is the major, major problem. You must be able to recall what you have read, what you have retained in your mind. You must be able to recall it. Now, let's look at steps i have about nine steps which you know there are steps some of them can be put together but i have nine steps with which you can use to study and make better grades now the first is that you set clear goals if you don't have clear goals it's difficult to put in the amount of work what are you aiming for are you aiming for an a are you aiming for a b do you just want to pass with a c this is important because if you have no aim your aim determines the amount of effort that you're going to put into your work are you aiming for a first class are you aiming for a second class upper are you good with a two two whatever it is set that goal for yourself and decide as you're setting that goal that determine that determines the amount of material you are willing to go through somebody who's just setting a two two goal who just wants a second class lower might not bother reading more than his exercise books or more than his notes in class but if you are heading if you are aiming for a first class you may need to read much more than your notes so I won't set your goal for you. You should decide by yourself, what are my goals? What do I want? Do I want to make a first class? Am I good with the second class upper? Am I good with the second class lower? Am I good with the third class? Whatever your goals are, that would you know, inform the kind of effort and the kind of way you intend to study. Now, the second thing is that you need to create a study schedule. You need to create a study schedule. You need to be consistent. What's your plan for studying? Are you planning to study? Now, in planning to study, you need to know the kind of person you are. What kind of person are you? Are you nocturnal like bats? Do you prefer to read at night? Some people read, some people prefer when they come back from school or from work, 
they can read and read until whenever time and then they sleep while some others prefer to come back sleep and wake up in the night and read you need to know yourself what kind of person are you what are you comfortable with now when you know what you are comfortable with the next thing is to plan a schedule what do you plan to do do you plan to read for two hours in a day do you plan to read for three hours in a day and if you space out reading and you have this plan and schedule you don't need to kill yourself you know exactly okay i'm doing two hours per day i'm doing three hours per day depending on the volume of information which you need to cover now when you plan that part of the scheduling too is to have a timetable what am i going to study some people study only the subject they like oh i myself i like biology i like microbiology and that's all i study so statistics i ignore when i get to the, to the exam what will happen with statistics so you have to have a plan and i suggest that when you have that plan the courses that you don't like that you are not too proficient that you are not too good in i suggest that you devote more time to them because you know that you are not so good in these courses if you devote more time to them you are able to work harder at them you are able to because you have that in your schedule you work harder at them and you know you get better at them so create a study schedule the next thing is to organize study space and eliminate distractions you find out that too many times students try to study and they are struggling with so many distractions that's why it is, is, is such that the attention span of students has become very very limited and very short so they find it difficult to study you can watch 300 tiktok videos in two minutes so that tells you that your mind keeps wandering so i tell people i suggest to students that they switch off their phones if they can and if perhaps you are expecting an important message or call it's good to put your phone either in airplane mode or simply just put your phone you know face down on the table such that you can't see what is happening there so that you can spend you know 30 minutes 40 minutes on your first stretch or bout of reading you know reading without any distraction eliminate distractions if you keep going to your phone 20 30 times it will keep disrupting the flow of your study and at the end it won't give you the best it's better if you can study for 40 minutes at a go and then go back to your phone or whatever it is that is distracting you then you are studying two minutes go back to your phone three minutes that will not help and it will, you will do a poor and a shoddy job so organize your study space eliminate distraction phones television music some people argue that they read with music in their ears like i said before everybody has a different method i don't read with music in my ears because the music i'll know the lyrics and i begin to sing and I, I don't think i would assimilate well singing the lyrics of a song so but if you're able to do it i don't know but for me distractions music tv your phone your tabs your ipads whatever it is keep them away your laptop keep it away and concentrate on the reading that you are doing this is very very important now the fourth thing is that you should take breaks when you study we all have an attention span so i believe that 30 to 40 minutes is the largest you can get you know information condensed information in a period of time so after 30 to 40 minutes of gathering information you should take periodic breaks take breaks of about 10 minutes walk around and then come back again do another 30 to 40 minutes study take another break 10 20 10 15 minutes go back do another 30 you know until the allotted time when you feel that yes assimilation has reached maximum level and then you can stop studying this is very important now the fifth um, point is that don't just read study now this is the nitty-gritty it's very important reading and studying there are two different things if you read a newspaper and you read a novel you're just getting information that you're putting in what we call your short-term memory you don't really we are not we are not going to be examined on those subjects but for school it's quite difficult and different because you want to put that information in your long-term memory so that it stays with you for a long time and you can recall now we are in the most important thing what do you do now these are steps i said don't just read study now under this area what do i expect you to do the first thing to do is this when you have materials that you want to study decide on the material that you want to study oh i want to read for an example in chemistry i want to read rates of chemical reactions good now the first thing you should do is quickly skim we have what we call skim reading skim skimming read through the material very quickly the whole material that you want to study for that your study period read through it very quickly now what that does for you is that it gives you a general idea of what it is you want to study oh i want to study rates of chemical reactions the different rates of chemical reactions there are uh, six or eight factors 
you know, that affect rates of chemical reaction and rates of chemical reaction. You know, you read, skim read. Now, when you skim read, the first thing skim reading does for you is that it gives you a general idea of what you want to study. The second thing it does for you is that you begin to realize the places that are difficult in that material that you want to study. Now, after skim reading, the second thing I want you to do is now actually read the material. Read the material quite slowly, but I always encourage students to read the easier parts of the material. When you skim read the material, you see that there are easy parts and there are hard parts. Now, read the easier parts first. Now, when you read those easier parts first, it gives you confidence that, oh, you can understand the material, you know what the material is talking about. After reading those easier parts slowly, then you can go on to read the harder parts. Now, when you've read both the easy and the harder parts, the next thing to do, which is the most important thing, is to close your book, take a jotter with a piece of pencil or, or biro, and begin to write down, begin to jot down in minor small jottings all that you can recall from this material that you have read. That is the litmus test. The amount of information that you can jot down, that you can recall from the material that you have just read, tells you the amount of information that is stored in your brain from the material. If you just read without studying, without trying to you know, distill information from that material, all you've done is just to read and you, you, you have not retained anything. But if you are able to jot down in a plain piece of paper information from what you have just read, and then you know that, okay, this is the information that I got from what I've just read. You can, using your skim reading um, skills, also compare your jottings and the major material. What is here that is not here? What is here that is not here? That way you know what you have been able to read and what you've been able to retain. Now, you should repeat this a couple of times with the material. Repeat it a couple of times, and then you begin to realize that each time you jot, you are covering almost all the information that is in the material that you have read. Once you do that, you begin to realize that you have retained quite a lot of the material that you read. And then go to these hard portions also, and also do that many, many times. You see that you retain a lot of the information that you have read. Now, number 16 is that you should be creative. When you read, you should be creative. When you are reading, look at it. When you are studying, look at it like someone who is going to war. If you are going to war, you have to be creative. There is no one way to, to solve a problem. You need to be creative. Sometimes you need to use acronyms. Sometimes you need to use rhymes. Sometimes it may be a song that you used to remember. Especially, there are always hard portions in every study, every, every science or even social science or English or the arts. There are always hard portions of the materials that we read. You need to be creative. You need to apply creativity in looking for a way that you used to remember these things. It might be an acronym. It might be a song. It might be a visual art. It might be a drawing. There must be a way that you be creative to use to remember, especially the difficult parts of your work. Be creative. This is very, very important. Now, number seven thing is keep a jotter. Always have jottings. I always tell people that these large textbooks, even science books, anatomy books that are so large, you can distill all the information in those large things into very small jotters because the textbooks give examples, give so many things that are needless. The major information, you can distill it into a very small sheet of paper or a very small jotter. So keep a jotter where you distill all this information. And what I used to do as a student back then was that those my jotters, when I was getting closer to my exam, I usually spend more of my time reading those my jotters than I'm reading my larger textbooks or notebooks because most of the important information that I need from the textbooks and the notebooks have been distilled into those jotters. And because I've been doing that so many times, I've been writing out, I have so many jottings, I read through the jottings and I'm good to go. All the information I have gathered. Now, number eight is that you should stay healthy. Drink water very well, you know, stay in a healthy place, eat good food so that this helps your retention. This helps your brain. It helps your memory when you are healthy. If you are not healthy, it's difficult for you to read and it's difficult for you to study. Avoid substance abuse. Avoid the use of alcohol. Avoid substance that can keep you in a breathed, that can keep you in a state of stupor. Those things make it difficult for you to read and for you to... If you are somebody who indulges in all those social vices, at the time when you want to read, try Discipline yourself such that you do not touch any of those things during the time when you want to read because this is very important. If you don't do this, you're not going to be able to get any information from the material that you are reading. Now, the ninth and last thing is for you to pray. 
I am a Christian, a practicing Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and I, I know that prayer is important. Whatever religion you belong to is important for you to pray because there are so many things that are struggling against your success. And let's say you have read and you have struggled and you have toiled, and the exam day comes and you are very sick and you can't write so well. well. What does that do for you? So you need to pray. It's important that you use prayer, you know, as a weapon for all the things that you do. It helps you to move ahead in life. This is very, very important. Now, these are the nine major tips for being able to, you know, study and get good grades. You should set clear goals. You should create a study schedule. You should organize your space and then eliminate distractions. You should take breaks. Then you should not just read, but you should really study. You should be creative. You should keep a jotter at all times. Then you should stay healthy and you should pray. Now, before I end this session, there are other little tips that you can just use to help yourself. You can find a study buddy, find a friend who you guys can read together and you're sure that you won't distract each other. Instead of distracting each other, you push each other to read better. You can do that. You can also join a study group. If you find like minds, people who want to read long hours and who are ready to study, you can join a study group. Lastly, you can also watch tutorial videos and educational videos like, my, like what I'm doing. You can watch these kind of videos. They will help you, you know, to study better and to understand the concepts better. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful evening.